All right, so this is our rock and roll bed. Um, it converts into a seat and a forward and backward facing seat. Um, so if someone needs to sit in the very back, they can. Um, otherwise, you can sit in the front. And it is six feet long. I'm five foot nine, so it is long enough to sleep me comfortably. So it is very functional for that. So these four cushions in the middle here, when it converts into a chair, sofa, I guess, they're actually on sliders so that when it folds up, this can slide up and sit on top of this seat here. Same thing with the back. Um, these cushions here, um, you don't necessarily need them, but we put them in just to create some extra space for a, a wider bed, essentially. So they'll come out when they convert into a seat and then they can just be for someone's armrest or whatever. As well, when the bed is in bed mode, there is actual storage underneath. So if you're coming and you're packing a lot of stuff, you can actually put a lot more um, stuff down there if you need to. And you can actually see the furnace peeking out, that red thing in the very back corner. And one other thing, we could have made the bed longer come right up to here but we would have lost some space here as well it's nice to be able to sit down and have some room for your feet um, just for putting on pants or whatever if you're keeping it in bed mode it gives you a little bit of wiggle room in between so we didn't want it to smoosh right against all of our cabinets so we thought that was best to leave a little bit of room there as well we've left this center panel open because uh for myself in particular in the middle of the night i like to sometimes get up and crawl to the front seat for whatever i may need to get whether it's exiting out of that door instead of this door or maybe there's food we left up there or whatever the case may be so this was a nice little access panel so these are the cabinets um, this one here, actually these two here, they kind of open this way. But this has shelves in it right now, so we can obviously stuff uh, things that we need to in there, whether it be food or clothing or um, bug screen. Um, but also there is a aluminum bar right here. So if we needed to, we could take all of these shelves out. And from here to the bottom of the cabinet, there's actually enough room to hang nicer clothing like suits or a suit pant or a dress if we were to go on a longer trip and we wanted to stop somewhere nice. If we needed to, we do have the room for that as well. In the front cabinet, again, it's just more space. Here's the wiring for the electrical panel. Uh, right now we just have uh, things like stuff that we can grab easily like coffee or uh, condiments. Right now I have my toiletry bag in there. And under here is more of the same. So this um, is stuff that we could access easily, whether it's in a bed mode or in seat mode, because when it's in seat mode, you do lose the ability to open this. Um, so we've put things in here that no matter what mode it's in, we're, we have access to. So we have the pan there for now, uh, pots, our handy little kettle, cups and other storage items. So here in the back, you'll see we have our inverter, then the charger, storing an empty water bottle. We have a dust pan, we have our vacuum, and then our kerosene tank for the furnace. It holds five liters and will run two or three days. Um, then here we have a bunch of storage for van related things spare oil it is a toyota after all uh, lots of odds and ends parts wd-40 we even have some epoxy because you never know when epoxy or duct tape is going to be handy and then down below we have ratchet straps and things for the roof all right this is our electrical panel um, here we have what's called kitchen lights so we haven't done it yet but we are going to string up some LED lights along the roof. We do have obviously this light here and headlights when we need them and flashlights, except that we thought it would be a little bit nicer to have lights all the way down to illuminate everything when we're in bed. So that's what this will be for eventually. Um, this one, I don't think we're gonna 
we don't have anything for yet so it's kind of in limbo right now this one's for the fridge right here and the fridge is right there you can hear the fan whirring uh, this is for the cabin lights. Also, we haven't done anything with this yet, but if we wanted to put up some more LED lights somewhere, maybe a dimmer um, red LED light for at night so it's not so uh, blaring in your eyes. Um, under here is the water pump, which is... Um, this one here isn't marked yet, but this is for our USB ports. There's one here. There's one located down here and there's some right here um, this one we haven't uh, put any purpose to yet so again this one's also in limbo until it's used and this is for the fan so these are our window coverings they serve two purposes one inside here is reflectix the other side here is microfiber fleece or micro fleece and what we've done is we've used a rubber cement that rubber cement glue and we've glued this to the side of here and we've shaped it to the windows so that they can fit in there so the two purposes that they serve is keeping in heat and keeping out heat when it's hot in the summer um, but the black on the outside also provides a little bit of privacy and it helps you go into van life stealth mode um, if you roll into a place that van lifers are not welcome this helps block out light and it could just be for all they know a van just sitting outside somewhere but they work really well in the winter it probably cuts back on the cold air that I feel personally by like at least 50 to 80 percent when they're not in there. So they're very functional. We just fold them up and then tuck them behind the front driver's seat over there. So our bed slash seat system um, is based on a rock and roll bed, but um, we built it out of 8020 aluminum so that it can really do whatever we want it to. Uh, we've fashioned these pillows at the side here which uh, allow us to extend the bed it's 41 inches wide uh, with this it's about uh, 47 or 48 which is just about a double uh, but these just pop out we toss them aside for when we're moving the seat and then this you'll watch these will slide up out of the way so it can fold up over top of that That's our furnace hose, and right now it's not attached, so it's just sitting loose. But as you can see, the seat folds up on this system here, allowing us to go back and forth. You can see there's a bunch of electrical under there. Between a bed and a quite comfortable seat that lets you spend hours driving to wherever your destination is in comfort let me get this one now and there we go so the other thing about this is these two seats in the back here are accessible with this whole thing sliding forward to about right here gives the person in the back about a 12 inches of, of foot room. Um, they have to be smaller. I've got three children, so um, it allows one or two of them to sit in the back, kind of like the old fashioned rumble seats you saw in station wagons of the 70s. But when this slides forward, giving that room, it allows the van to seat six people, which is a little uncommon for a van that's also a camper van. So this is our drawer cabinet. They open and close just by pushing and they pop open. These top two drawers are only accessible when it's in bed mode. 
So we want to make sure we have things that we need all the time in the top two, two drawers. So down here is kind of less important stuff. Some detergent there, towels, kind of uh, Ziploc bags. And more kind of like stuff that we don't use a whole lot, but it's handy to have for any kind of purposes. We used to have the uh, pots and pans in this bottom drawer, but we realized pretty quickly that that was a pain to try and get to, depending on whether it was in bench mode or bed mode. So we decided just to put all of the cooking utensil, accessory stuff that we needed in this part here, because it was almost always accessible that way. The other thing is too, is when this seat is pushed all the way back, this drawer here is obviously inaccessible, but this one, you can access it if you need to just by pushing on it hard enough. So there is still some accessibility here, as long as this bench is pushed all the way back. All right, so for USB ports, there is uh, two there. And there is another two here. As well, there are two here. And these plugins, when we turn the inverter on, run our Vitamix small appliances, and on the inverter itself, there is another two plugins there as well. So all together, we have four if we need them. So our furnace is actually installed, which you can't see, but under this bottom cabinet right there. So it's uh, a 17,000 BTU furnace, and it we've used it a few times, um, and it actually works beautifully. It's very quiet. As people have mentioned, the pump is kind of noisy, but nothing that has been too disturbing for me. So it is a diesel furnace, but we use kerosene in it because we're at a higher altitude. Um, it's a cleaner burning fuel, which we figured just will cause less issues overall. And so far it's been, it's been really great. Um, there is a controller that we haven't permanently installed yet because we plan on replacing it with something a little bit better. But as you can see, there would be the power. You can turn it up or down. You can go through the functions and modes. Um, it does go down quite low, which is nice because you don't want to get too hot. And um, if it's not too cold out, we have found that even on the lowest setting, it heated the van really well. I think it was like 23 degrees in here, um, which was hotter than what we need to sleep in. So under here is again some storage and it's the electrical. Um, in here we have two RV batteries that powers everything that we need. So in this cabinet, if you look to the very, very back, you'll see that's where most of the 110 volt electrical is, including a relay that allows us when we plug in shore power, to automatically switch between shore power and the inverter. So this here is our water cabinet. Inside are the fresh water and gray water tanks. They're about 22 liters each. You can yeah. see your measurements there. But yeah, about um, five gallons or 22 liters. So what we've done for the sinks here is we've actually used those warming trays that they'll use in like buffets. Um, we thought it was kind of an easy way to get the size of the sink that we wanted. Plus RV sinks are usually generally quite pricey. So this was an affordable alternative for using that. So um, on this side here, this actually slides out and then we can do dishes in here if we have to. This is kind of like a drying thing or a junk tray for now or just holding the odds and ends that we need. But if we do need to do dishes, we can do it in here as well. This whole thing can come out and we can dump it outside if it's feasible. Obviously you wanna be careful where you do that. Uh, this one here is stationary. This one does not come out but we did fit this with a little RV drain, which again goes into the gray water. 
right here, plumbed right down. So when I turn the water pump on, what we have here is a hose that can come out and spray. It's actually got a lot of kick, this uh, sprayer. So even if you wanted to, let's say, take a shower and wash your hair out there, this does extend quite a bit if you need to, and it's got quite a bit of range. Yeah. So in the summertime, again, when it is warm, then this water can heat up and you can actually wash your hair quite comfortably, which makes it kind of a nice treat if you're on the road for a long time. And here is the water pump. And again, it only works when the water pump is turned on, which we only do when we actually want to use the water to prevent any leakages or what have you. So the other function of our water cabinet is it actually hides our stove that we use, which is tucked in behind the passenger seat. So this stove is uh, portable so if we want we could either set it up here and cook in here or when it's nice outside we like to cook outside a lot um, and it just uses one of these little propane tanks they are relatively cheap um, to buy so that was an easy answer for our cooking needs so this is our fridge cabinet and it also serves the purpose of hiding our window coverings tucked in behind here. It runs on 12 volts. It's an electric uh, cooling type fridge. Um, again, this was a much more affordable option than getting an RV fridge, which can be quite pricey. So this has worked very well for us. Um, for the size and for the way it works. Now, of course, if you have an extremely hot uh, temperature that you're fighting against, it's probably not gonna be able to keep up, but so far it's done really well for us. And it opens here and it opens there as well. So we've kept this bungee cord to slide up and down because when it's packed to the rim and it's bumpy, this door here has a tendency to pop open. So we keep it there just to make sure everything stays nice and tight in there. And it might seem a little awkward for how this is set in here, um, because as you can see from that position over there, it kind of blocks you a bit. However, it works because um, it's nice to be able to reach into the fridge when we're driving from my position or whoever's sitting here. So all I have to do when I'm sitting like this is reach behind and I can fish and grab whatever I need and it works pretty well. And even from that position, it's been fine to get what I need. It hasn't caused any problems. Okay, so our countertops here um, you can see first of all there is a separation between this one and that one and that is by design it wasn't an accident also really quickly you can kind of see a slight curve in this one especially but this one too while we were in Las Vegas this past summer it was extremely hot I think it was around 50 degrees and it caused these to kind of warp in the heat unfortunately but it's all right, they can be easily replaced, which we probably will end up doing. But the reason why there's a separation between this cabinet and this cabinet is Toyota Previas are mid-engine vehicles. So in order to access the engine for checking the oil or whatever we might need to do, this needs to slide away so that the seat can fold back and out of the way. So what we've done Rather rudimentary, rather rudimentary, what is it? Rudimentarily. What is the word? We're in a rudimentary fashion. Okay.